Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to explain the difference between setting up a recurring task in Asana versus using a task template. They are kind of similar because both recurring tasks and templates allow you to clearly define how and when certain tasks should be completed, but they work in kind of separate ways and clients that we work with often ask about when should I use a recurring task versus a template. So that's what I'll be talking about in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing your Asana account, getting more out of the tool or improving the adoption of your your team, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana support options. Now, one of the reasons you might want to use either a recurring task or a task template is to establish more consistency and really define your processes in Asana. In one of my previous videos, which I'll link up here, I talked about how you can use Asana for writing down and documenting your standard operating procedures, or SOPs. By writing down the process about how work should be complete, and by using subtasks to define the checklist of what you actually need to do for that process, you can create more consistency, and you can make sure that the process is followed the same way every single time. And you can use either a recurring task or a task template for defining these SOPs. Now, I would recommend using a recurring task for any work that you need to complete at a regular interval. For example, here I'm actually in my uh, actual Asana account here. I have this daily reminder to respond to my help at inbox, which is a separate email account of mine. And you can see in the due date here, I've set this up to repeat every single day or rather every weekday. So this is just a very simple, daily recurring reminder that I have to do this every single day. As another example, every week I try and respond to my YouTube comments. I generally do this on a Wednesday. So this repeats every single week. I've got this set to repeat weekly on that Wednesday. And you can see for quick reference, I've put a link down here where I can quickly access uh, the comments that I need to respond to. And here's another example of a weekly recurring task for somebody on my team, Judy. She has to make certain updates to my Pipedrive account on a weekly basis. And as I said at the top of this video, this is where you can define your process that the team, or Judy in this case, needs to follow. So in here, I've actually put video instructions showing myself completing this task and explaining what to do. I've also put a bit of an SOP, a bit of uh, instruction in here to define what she actually needs to do, on a weekly basis. To create a new recurring task, I can do this a number of ways. I can either go to one of my projects here, or I often find the quickest way to do this is to click the create button in the top left and then create a new task. I can then give my task a name. So I can say submit, uh, let's say monthly report. I can define who should this be assigned to. Either I can uh, assign it to myself or I can type the name of somebody on my team here, but I think I'll just assign this to myself for now. If I want to, I can put this into a project uh, and choose a section that this is relevant to. So that way this is gonna appear in, in that project on the left. I can put some notes. So report needs to be submitted to X via email, you know, just a bit of a description of like what we're actually doing, uh, how, how we need to deliver this report in this case. And then finally down at the bottom, I'm gonna add my due date. And what I would do is choose the, when is the next date I need to complete this by? So maybe actually this monthly report, maybe it's something I actually do at the start of the new month. So maybe I do this, let's say on the first. So I'll choose first of September in this case, that's the next date when I'm actually gonna to need to do this. And now to make this recur, I'm gonna choose this little icon down at the bottom here to set this task to repeat. And so here I have some options. I can either make this repeat daily if I want this to repeat every single day. I can make it repeat weekly and I can even specify individual days of the week. For example, I can make this repeat on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. This is quite good if you want to set tasks to, happen, uh, to be due every day of the week, but not weekends, you can use this option. I can also choose to set tasks to be due on the first uh, of every month. And I could say, uh, I could specify a specific day of the month, like the first, second, third, fourth, last day of the month. And I can also choose a specific day if I want to. So I could say the first um, Friday of the month, 
Or I could say, right, this is going to be due on just the first of the month. Now, the consideration there is that might be due on a weekend, so I have to account for that. So I might actually say, maybe we'll do this on the first, uh, yeah, let's just say first Friday of the month. So in this case, my next, the next time I'm going to have to do this task would be the 1st of September. And then the, the time after that, it will be the 6th of October, which is the first Friday of the new month. Uh, and then I do have options for making tasks repeat yearly. So it's going to be the same date, 1st of September every year. I can choose periodically. This is appropriate if I want to set tasks to repeat um, certain intervals after completion. So I could say this is due maybe 10 days after completion. So in this case, when I complete it, the next task will be due 10 days later. And finally, I have a full custom option here. So if I want to specify every one, two, three, four weeks, I can do every other week, every other month, and I have more custom controls here. But for this particular monthly report, what I would do is choose, yeah, the monthly, and I'll do first Friday of the month. So I've set that up now and uh, I'm ready to go. So I will create that task. Now, what's important to keep in mind with recurring tasks is I have to complete the existing task before I get the reminder for the new period. So to show you what I mean, let's pretend like I've completed this task now. So it's due on 1st of September. I'm going to mark that as complete. I get a little celebration on my page. And then if I wait a second, Asana will assign a new task for me. So here we go. This task just got created for me. This is now due on the 6th of October, which is the first Friday of the following month. And so as you can see here, the new reminder for next month doesn't appear until the existing task is complete. This is important to keep in mind because if you're not careful, you can fall behind on your recurring tasks. For example, let's say you have a task that repeats every single Wednesday. Now, if it's Wednesday today and I don't complete today's task because maybe I'm ill, I'm not available, or I'm just, I don't have time for it that day, I still need to complete the task for today so that I get the new reminder for the following Wednesday. So that is a look at recurring tasks. And the main reason to use a recurring task is if you want that regularly recurring minder to appear automatically at a certain interval every week, every month, every year. Then we have task templates and you'll find your templates in your projects. Now I actually have a whole video, which I'll link up here where I talk about how to create templates. So definitely go and check that out. And if you go to the customize menu within a project, you will find towards the bottom, your task templates. Now templates live in individual projects. If I create a template in this one project, I can only access that template within this project. If I want to use this template in a different project at the moment, at the time of recording this, I do need to recreate that template multiple times. So a bit of a pain there. Now the use case for a task template is if I want to set up a task with a checklist, but it's not really a task that I need to do at a set interval. It's not something I'm necessarily doing every week or every month, but when I do identify that this is a task we need to complete, I've got my checklist ready to go. So for example here, here is the task template for creating a video, an Asana video for YouTube. And I've got my uh, subtasks down here of what we need to do for every video. And if I click into one of these subtasks, you'll even see I've got notes for things like the default description, links that we include, where chapter markers and intros and things go. So very much like a recurring task, it's a way that I can establish a bit of a, an SOP in Asana. I can put the instructions of what we need to do, but I wouldn't, for, for this example, for creating an Asana video, this isn't necessarily something I do every week. I don't necessarily do an Asana video every Friday. Sometimes it's Asana, sometimes it's Pipedrive, sometimes it's a completely different topic. So because it's not a task that recurs at a specific interval, I would use a template. And so if I go to my list view here, instead now of setting up a task from scratch, just a blank task and having to set up the subtasks every single time, I can access my templates. And if I choose the Asana video one here that I just showed you, Asana is going to create this task and it's going to fill out the subtasks with all the notes that I've set up as per my template. The final thing for me to do is I'll give the video a name up here. So how to create templates in Asana. And then I would define the due date, you know, maybe this is a video I'm publishing in two weeks.
I use task templates for the content that I'm producing. So as you can see here, I've got templates for videos, podcasts, blog posts, webinars. Again, these aren't things that I necessarily do at a regular interval every week or every month, but I have the template ready to go so that when I, I, when I have an idea for a piece of content, I can create that task from my template. In this sales project here, I have templates for things like creating new lessons for my coaching program. So again, there's a bit of a checklist that we go through every single time, but because I'm not doing lessons at any set frequency, I'm not doing them necessarily every week or every month, I wouldn't use a recurring task. Instead, I would use a template like this so that when I think of a new lesson, I can create that task from the template. Or one final example, here in my client's project, we use tasks to manage the clients that we're working with. And we have a che checklist of kind of the, the steps that we like to go through. It's where we'll list the deliverables for that project. And again, you know, we do have clients signing up all the time, but this isn't exactly a task that I repeat every week or every month, like, you know, um, like that checking the inbox, like I showed you before. Instead, I will come in here when I need to, and I can use the task template to set up the new client task when that client signs up. So it really is that simple. If you want to receive a reminder at specific intervals every week, every month, quarter, or year, and you always want to be reminded on that specific day, use a recurring task. The recurring task is gonna copy the notes and the attachments, so you've got that SOP repeating every single time. Or, if you just have work that happens every now and then, but it's not necessarily a weekly recurring task, you can use a task template to create the task with your SOP when you identify that the task needs to be done. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. And as I mentioned, if you'd like help with Asana, click the link in the description below to learn more about my support options. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.